Hello and welcome to my shop. Recently I did a video that I dubbed my back to school blank and uh, for that blank what I did is I just randomly cut the blank in half and glued some denim between the two halves gluing them back together and I shot some holes in it and glued colored pencils randomly throughout the blank and it seemed to be a fairly popular blank. I got a lot of positive comments on it. I got one comment though from Tommy Stryerdom. Tommy, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. And he asked me, what do you think a blank would look like if you drilled through and glued the colored pencils in at different angles? I'm surprised I hadn't thought of this yet. It's really, it's a simple idea, but it's, a, it's an awesome idea, and I think it should produce a really cool looking blank. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna build a blank. It's gonna be a colored pencil blank. Uh, I'm not gonna put multiple medias in it. I'm just gonna deal with the colored pencils today so that I can make sure everything's gonna work out all right. But we're gonna take a blank and we're gonna drill holes in it at different angles. We're gonna insert colored pencils and then we're gonna turn it. So let's get started. To make this blank, I just grabbed a scrap piece of wood and cut it to a 45 degree angle. I'm using a little painter's tape to kind of hold my blank steady because it does want to move as you drill it. And I've got a 19 64 inch bit chucked up in my drill press. That is the exact diameter of the colored pencils I'll be using. You see what I mean about the blank wanting to move? It's very difficult to hold it steady. I'm gonna adjust my table up so that I can get to the bottom of the blank. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that strategy. I think I'm gonna flip the blank over. I think I'm gonna drill in the opposite direction just to make it a little more interesting. We'll try to hold this steady. And now I'll go ahead and get rid of the tape and flip the blank over and drill a couple of holes uh, on this side of the blank. I got my blank taped up and I was preparing to drill my holes on this side and something occurred to me. I've got an entry hole here and an exit hole here. I need to go ahead and get the pencil glued in there, let the glue dry because I'll drill right down through the center of that pencil when I make this hole. So we're gonna stop, go ahead and get our pencils drilled in, then we'll come back and finish the second set of holes. The glue has had several hours to dry. I'm going to go ahead and trim the pencils off just so they're not in the way. I've gone ahead and taped the blank up to the uh, waste block and let's see if we can get these drilled out. I decided to only drill two holes in this side of the blank. And the reason why is with these going in at angles, it's really going to change the integrity of the wood in the blank. And it makes me a little nervous. I already have an issue here where one of the pencils came out right in the center of the blank. So I think I'm gonna cut the blank on either side. And you can see, let me get my hand out of the way. I'll have enough on the end of, over here on the left to turn it but I don't want this to be split right in the center of my blank because if I do that, it's, it's going to cause a major problem. So I'm nervous about that already. This will be an interesting intersection here too with the blue and the pink, and then on this side here, the, the pencil coming out. So it's gonna be an interesting blank to see made. Uh, let me go ahead and get these two colored pencils glued in, and then we'll let her dry and start cutting the blanks. The 
the glue has dried enough on my blank to go ahead and trim the pencils. So I've done that. And what I've also done is mark for my blank. Now I'm gonna cut this half for a blank and I decided to cut from here back. And the reason why this is going in at an angle like this, I want to give myself as much meat as possible down toward the center of the blank in hopes of not having a blowout with that pencil uh, being in there at a 45 degree angle. What I need to do now is get this blank cut into two separate blanks. We'll drill it out, glue it up, and get it tubed. I'm ready to drill this blank for tubes, and I've decided to purposely drill off-center. And here's my train of thought. If I go down the center, that's going to put this colored lead right next to, or it's going to make it the outside of my pen surface and put it right next to the clip, which is going to increase my chances of chip out and probably of having to do a repair on the blank. If I go ahead and drill the blank off center, I can put the wood from this colored pencil next to the clip or next to the trim ring, sorry, and there'll still be enough meat on the back side to be able to finish the opposite side of the pen. I think that's going to offer me the best opportunity for success. I don't want to lose this because this is kind of a cool little feature right here. I think that's going to work quite nicely. There's plenty of room there to be able to finish the opposite side of the pen. Ooh, not good. Look at this. I just noticed that. We're going to press that back in, and I'm going to go douse that. There, that looks pretty good. You can't even tell there's a crack in it. I'm going to go douse all of these with CA. I'll get my tube glued in first, and then I'll make sure all of the um, colored pencils are covered in CA. Because this orange pencil is poking out from the edge of the blank, I'm not going to be able to drill from the center out. I couldn't get a good fit inside of my vise. So what I'm going to do is drill from the opposite direction. I don't really think it will pose a problem because this is a maple blank. So it's pretty well just going to be maple against maple. I'm worried that these blanks might be a little too delicate for a barrel trimmer uh, just because the colored pencil is being so close to the ends. So I'm going to go ahead and use this sanding jig and trim these right down level with the tubes. One other thing I want to do is you'll notice how the pencils are protruding from the blank. I'm going to go ahead and sand them down level with the blank, and my hope there is it's less opportunity for the tool to catch and maybe tear one of them out. I was nervous about this where one pencil goes through another pencil, it doesn't leave a lot of surface area and it actually chipped out pretty good there. Uh, I'm going to keep turning because there's still a quarter of an inch almost of blank left. My guess is this orange will probably just disappear. Uh, I'm going to fill this quite heavily with some medium CA and just let it dry for a while naturally. And then we'll come back and we'll do a little more turning. 
Now I've given the CA plenty of time to dry, so I'm ready to go ahead and start turning again. Let's hope that holds together. I'm really getting nervous about this blank, and I'll tell you why. As you can see, the blue is starting to disappear. I think the orange will disappear. <laughs> I'm nervous that a lot of these pencils are just going to go away because I, I didn't realize how to plan the angles. This was my first attempt, and because of the way I shot them through, with them being close to the ends of the pen, we're, we're just sort of uh, losing some of them. So let's continue turning and, and see what happens. Sometimes when you use CA to fill, like I'm doing, if you don't give it enough time to dry, it will string out and it will do this to your tool rest. There are little strands of CA running across the rest. They produce a rough surface and when you move your tool across there, it actually will cause your tool to bounce up and down and make a rough surface on your blank. So if you're using CA for fill, keep an eye on your tool rest and periodically just take a little sandpaper and smooth it back out. I finally got rid of the flat spot on that front blank. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flip these over and start sanding in the opposite direction. And what that'll do is any grain that I've laid over this way while I'm cutting, it'll raise it back up. I went ahead and finished this one off with a skew. I, I started to get a couple little tiny catches and I was worried I was going to really destroy the blank. And the skew gave me a really nice cut. And there's a really nice smooth finish there compared to this one, which is a little rougher. But I'm not worried about it. The sandpaper will clean everything right up. I sanded the blank down to 400 grit and I'm ready to go ahead and clean it up with a little denatured alcohol. It looks really pretty neat. I think what I'll do is go ahead and get my non-stick bushings on here, then we'll clean it up really good and start applying a finish. When I use denatured alcohol, I always like to wipe the blank left to right first. That way, if there's any dust down in the grain of the blank, that sort of helps me get it out. And once I get it good and clean that way, I'll get a little more denatured alcohol start to lathe up and then we'll go ahead and just let it spin and and rub any other remaining dust off the blank the blank looks really good what I'm gonna do is just let it spin for a few minutes you want to make sure all the denatured alcohol dries before you apply any CA otherwise you could uh, you could see blemishes in your finish I'm gonna lay down about five coats of thin CA and then I'll follow that up with several coats of medium. I don't exactly know how many coats of the medium I'll use because I'll continue to apply it until all of the areas around the pencils have filled in and leveled up. The blank is looking really nice. I put five coats of thin CA on and then I followed it up with four heavy coats of medium. I did not use activator until the very last coat and I let the blank spin dry for about three to four minutes before hitting it with the accelerator and um, really made really made it look nice. I'm gonna go ahead now and micro mesh the blank down and it should level up very nicely and polish up and be really, really shiny. So I'll come back in a moment and show it to you. Here's the blank right after micro mesh. I have not applied any polish yet. It's looking fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead now and hit it with a little Plastex polish.
Wow, it looks amazing. I like the effect of the pencils, how they come out one on top of each other like that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, now that I've done one of these and I know how the pencils appear, uh, I'm going to go ahead next time I do one and I'm going to put more pencils in just to give it more, you know, more uh, color and more, more interest. It turned way better than I ever thought it would. I'm going to go ahead and get it off the lathe. I'll get it pressed into a kit and I'll come back and show it to you. I'm not going to show pressing it into a kit because I'll just be using a slimline kit and uh, I've shown that many, many times and there are a lot of videos out there for uh, slimline assembly. So we'll finish it and come back and show you what it looks like. Here's a quick peek at the final pin. I think it turned out really nice. I was nervous about a lot of aspects of this pin, but uh, overall, it really turned out to be a nice pin. It finished nice. My favorite part is this, where the three pencils overlap, and then up here where the two pencils overlap. Knowing what I know now, the next time I make one, I think I can plan for more of, of this type of an effect. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me tonight. This was a fun little experiment. I'm really glad that, that Tommy suggested this because I hadn't thought of it. I, I was nervous almost the entire time I was making the blank because I didn't know what to expect. And I was worried that I would have a lot more chip out and a lot more um, issues than I did, but it actually held together fairly well. I did use Thin CA prior to turning on all of the colored pencils. And during turning, I think about three times I hit them with CA. Uh, I had to do a little filling back here on, um, there it is, this group right here, because uh, you know the uh, orange pencil started to chip out. But uh, I, I kept most of it in there and it turned out looking really nice. Overall, I'm happy with the pen. It's a slim line. It operates very smoothly. I think it's a nice pen and uh, I'm happy with it. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. You come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody, and have a really nice evening.